you know, I think back now, you know what, that was, that was a poor choice by me. Yeah. But, you know, I don't use the word stupid often, and I'm not calling you stupid, but I do think that for everybody who does that, it's just really a stupid thing to think that you can take your eyes off the road and do that at the same time. So I don't mean, I'm not saying you're stupid. It just seems just illogical to me. So tell me why it never occurred to you. Growing up, going to high school, going to driver's ed, um, it was never taught to me how dangerous it was. It was never- So in driver's ed, they don't talk about it? Um, not when I went to school, no. Never, never once did, did I hear, you know, Reggie, you text and drive or you use your cell phone while driving. This is how dangerous it is. This is the statistics behind it. Um, I, I was never taught that. It's no excuse for what I did, but. How did you feel when you realized that you had killed two people? Terrible. So, uh, hear something like that, and something you never want to hear, ever. Mm -hmm. It never gets easier. How has this affected your life? Um, this affects my life every day. It's something that I never really forgive myself for. Is poor choice that I made, um, you know, have trouble sleeping at night, uh, drive down the road, you see accidents on the side of the road, and instantly that's the first thing I think of. Mm -hmm. It's hard every day, it never gets easier. Mm -hmm. But you can use your voice, you know, and I want to say to every single person who's wa watching here today, and you are on your cell phone driving, for every single person, particularly who is texting, you're looking at yourself in this chair when you look at Reggie because it could have been you. It could have been you. And you didn't mean to kill those no. two men no. who had their own families and had their own lives and, you know, leave behind people who are, you know, will struggle forever because they're not here. You didn't mean to do it. You're a decent human being. You had your own dreams and goals. You, you, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, like you said, it happened to anyone. And you never thought it could happen. Did yeah, you think yeah, exactly. when you were texting that you were maintaining some level of being able to watch the road and? Yeah, of course. I mean, of course I thought, you know, well, I can do this, I can handle this. Um, you know, I've, things like this don't happen to people like me, where I come from. Um, and just one second later, a poor choice took two great men's lives. There's nothing I can do now. Last fall, Reggie spoke at a national summit in Washington, D.C. about the dangers of distracted driving. He also uh, speaks at, at, at high school. And when you're talking to young students who are right now where you were uh, at 19 when you killed those two men, what do they say? Um, a lot of them think along the lines like I thought, you know. Uh, I can do this. I'm safe. Um, and I explained to them, you know, it's, it's not safe. Absolutely not. You know, look what it's done to me. Look what it's done to these two families. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put anyone through that. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. Well, in the aftermath of the crash that took Keith and Jim's lives, Utah enacted some of the toughest texting and driving laws in our country. Uh, and um, Jackie, you credit Reggie with helping get those laws passed so quickly. Yes. You do? Mm -hmm. He went and spoke with the legislature and convinced the lawmakers to pass the law. Have you forgiven him? Yeah, um, I, you know, I realized that he was truly sorry, and he's, you know, he's accepted his punishment, and he's even gone above and beyond what was asked of him in some cases. What was your and punishment? Um, I served 30 days in jail. Um, did community service. Um, was 30 days in jail enough? I don't know. Um, I know you're glad it was only 30 days, but now that you're out, really, seriously, was 30 days in jail enough? You know, I think about those 30 days in jail and what I, what I went through and how hard that was for me. Um, and I think about the two lives that were lost. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I don't know if it was enough. Thank you for being honest and answering that question. And I thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Jackie and Megan, thank you also. We'll be right back. It was tough, I know. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. AJ was a presence. He was goofy and funny, and um, he had an amazing smile. It was December 3rd, 2007. I was coming down the street after grocery shopping, and there was an accident up ahead. I came up behind the accident and saw that it was my son's car. When I got to the hospital, a doctor and nurse came in, and they sat down, and he said, we did all we can do. We, we couldn't save your son. And it's, I mean, it takes your breath away. It's like someone punches you in the stomach, and, and all your air is gone. AJ rolled through the stop sign at the entrance to our neighborhood and into the path of a garbage truck. He was texting his girlfriend. His accident was 100% preventable. We're not talking about statistics. We're talking about sons, daughters, mothers, husbands, boyfriends, brothers, sisters, aunts, grandmothers it's my son wasn't just a number he's not just a statistic my son was AJ Larson and he meant the world to me and a lot of other people and he's no longer here because of texting while driving viewer need to break. This decorator never lets us down. Morning. Oh my gosh. Now Nate Burkus, three kids, a minivan, one old egg. Are you wet? Oh. Can we eat a bite of this? Whoa. Where's your house? This way? What? Then his first head to toe makeover. She's got a date with Nate. I am so a high school reunion to remember with rocker Rick Springfield. You're gone. She was 61 years old. She was a wife, a mother, a grandmother. She was everybody's best friend. Just a little over a year ago, everything changed. We all lost our hero. The last day we ever saw my mom alive was on her birthday. Now on September 3rd of 2008, a 20-year-old driver ran a red light and T-boned her car at about 45 to 50 miles an hour. He immediately got out of the car and said that he was on the phone. He didn't see the light. And, you know, the news reports that night, the newspapers the next day said he was engrossed in a cell phone conversation. When I saw the seat she was sitting in, that was the hardest part for me. Put your mother, your wife, your son, your daughter, your grandparents, your friend in that seat that my mother was sitting in. And you tell me, is that phone call worth it? So for most of us, getting behind the wheel of a car is the most dangerous thing that we do all day. If you're talking on the phone, you're four times more likely to get into an accident. If you text while you drive, you're eight times more likely. So before your mother's accident, I hear that you were a big multitasker in the car. I was a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. My car was my office.